This is the basketball show. What they gonna say next? Yes, it's time for another episode of the basketball show, proudly brought to you by TCL 2K and News Corp. Joe Healy alongside Shane Heal. Got my TCL. You do. Yeah. Uh, it's been a big day for your family. 3 a.m. wake up call. I'm so feeling exciting. it now. The WNBA show I made a debut. Only five minutes and uh, a little bit of a nervous start, but she only had a couple of training sessions, so yeah, take exactly a bit of time. Right. It's great that she's finally on, on on the court. Finally over there. Mingling and, and getting on with their teammates, it's great to see. A few Aussies on court too, which was good, and a few Flames. Talk a little bit more about that as time goes on. We definitely will. It's <laughs> also been a big day for TCL. It has. They have released three brand new phones, all of them under $500, which is insane. Uh, there is a 5G that's $499. There's another one that's $399. 299 two, And $299 as well. And TCL's known for making TV, so you know the display is going to be unbelievable. But I watched WM. NBA and NBA. Yeah, everything. Uh, NBA time. League Pass. I'm yeah. on it all the time. WNBA um, All you pass. social media influencers out there, I know you're one of them, aren't you? Yep. These cameras are insane, so yeah, that's the other stuff. thing. Um, so, yeah, thank you again to TCL. We love that they support the basketball show. They've been with us from the beginning, uh, and we really appreciate their support. We certainly do. Good all right, stuff. let's get into our TCL starting five then. We mentioned this last week, the Utah Jazz have giving out uh, oh. scholarships for for. for Children and students in need. It's a really amazing initiative. And they got some of the players involved to, to make the call and yeah, good. make the announcement. It's really, really sweet. Take a look. I had to call and let you know, man, that you got the scholarship. You got the Utah Jazz Scholarship. And I wanted to be the first to congratulate you, man. And I wanted to congratulate you on being selected for the Utah Jazz Scholarship. You're joking. Not at all, man. I just want to say congratulations. You've been chosen to receive the Utah Jazz Scholarship. It's all yours, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, no cap. You're lying. No, I promise you, You're I wouldn't lying. I would I would never lie to you. So fifty-three scholarships, one yeah, for every win in the regular season, they had fifty and then three preseason games. It's it's just really nice what they're doing. Incredible stuff, it really is. Just changes people live, people's lives and uh, great to see pro teams giving back. Yeah, that covers everything as well, those scholarships, yep. board, stationery, clothing, yeah. everything. It's yep. great. Um, not such a good story. <laughs> this actually just makes me laugh. Uh, the Aussie women's 3 by 3 team oh. missed their flight to Europe because they didn't have travel exemptions, which should have been organised by Basketball Australia. How on earth does that happen <laughs> for Olympic qualifying? <laughs> I don't know, but I hope it doesn't put them behind because they're going to go all the way to the other side of the world and they've got lack of preparation as it is and they're going to qualify. So uh, amazing stuff. I just shake my head sometimes. That that hurts. Our it girls does. are resilient though. They'll be fine. They'll, they, uh, they arrived a day late, so not too much preparation. Kelly Froling missed. ready to kill them. She will. <laughs> she, She's going to she, smash them. She, she will. She's yeah. ruthless. <laughs> um, this is a, a really interesting story out of the state. So there's a, a player, Scoot Henderson, who has yep. become the youngest professional player in America. He's a junior in high school and he's skipping the rest of high school. He's not going to college. He's gone straight to the G League. It high school feels, dropout. Who it, would do that? It, 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 oh, I did. Yeah. And, 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 some, and sometimes <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. It just feels like he's very young. He's not, he even, el he's not even eligible for the 2022 NBA draft. So he's committing two years to the G League. Why not? He's going to get paid great money. He's guaranteed. Yeah. He's I, I'm, not saying, I'm, I'm not saying that there's anything He's only a year younger than LaMelo and those guys coming to Australia. Yeah. He's staying in America. So you're, I'm all for it. You're all for it? Yeah. Okay. I think it'll right. be all right. We'll, we'll move on then because I, I agree. Good I was, on you, mate. I was Have a rubbish crack. at school, so, so was why I. not? Grade 7 was the best three years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> closer to home, uh, the NBL. Season is slowly wrapping up. It feels like the Slowly? <laughs> it's been dragging on for months. It's like the end of the tunnel, okay? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, oh. The Phoenix look like they've wrapped up they this number good. three spot. Yeah, they look good. And it's on the back of Sykes. Kiefer Sykes, mm. since he came back, they just... And, and we know Mitch he's Creek... He's come back twice. The first time he came back, he was slow to get going. He had another break and he's come back this time. Yeah, but he, he's now come back with... A sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. So Mitch Creek was that leader. He was like resilient, tough, and really led those guys. He went into a shell the last month. And but Kiefer Sykes has come back and said, All right, here we go. I'm the leader now. I'm gonna be the inspiration. I'm gonna lead you guys 
to the promised land, and he's been able to do it. They're one of the hottest teams in the competition right now, and it just makes things interesting. You definitely wouldn't want to finish second, because if you finish top, you're going to play against the Hawks or the Kings we'll or someone get, like we'll that. We'll talk about that in a second. But if you finish second and have to play against Phoenix, that is a total... That's a total difference. It seems like they're having good contribution from across they the are. board as well. I think Yanni Wetzel had 19 the other day. Yep. I'm, got, I've been in his corner the entire season. Talent. I love him. They've got talent. And and now with some of these other guys being able to get going and Brock off now healthy, they're dangerous. They really are. Uh, Simon Mitchell re-signed with the club. He did. For next season. He did. Do you, well, we reported, do... we reported that they were going to go after Gorge. Yeah. And talk is... The rumour is that they, they actually... Tried to go after Gorge. Approached why, Gorge, why, right? Why, why wouldn't you? It's Gorge. No, of course. And and so I think that we were right in that. And um, that didn't happen. And now they've signed Simon Mitchell. Yeah, which is cool. Right. I, I like Simon Mitchell. Yeah. Oh, I reckon he's stopped arguing a bit since we had a crack at him. Can we take responsibility <laughs> with, with, for that? With the referees. We did go hard. You can try. <laughs> he, he's been much better lately because he was going through a real bad patch. He was whining. All He's right. been good. Let's move on. So they've locked up third. Yep. Fourth spot at the moment, it's the Hawks. Speaking of Brian Gordon, it yep. feels like it's going to be a race between them and Sydney. Yep. Brisbane are... One game, I reckon. Yeah. They play each other. They, last game of the season. That is going to determine who gets the uh, last spot. At the moment, the Kings are 1% up, and it's no longer the head-to-head. -head. It's just percentage. So um, it could come down to that last game. Wouldn't it be great? If the arch rivals, the end of this, the longest season in the history of the <laughs> NBL, the, the 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 groundhog season, it's named, um, finished with the rivalry playing off to see who gets forced. It would be awesome. Who would win it? Who goes through? I think I think Sydney go through. I do. Still, but even, I, I don't even think... with everything they've been through and yep. their injury hurdles, I just don't. I'm just not convinced that the Hawks can score enough to be able to get it done. Okay. They did against Cairns, but I don't think they can. I don't think either of those teams win a playoff game against, against Melbourne. Against Melbourne, yet. no. So I think it's a sweep. They're just prolonging their season. All right. but that's all right. You'd rather be there than not. Time will tell. At least the playoffs are just around the corner. <laughs> Well, thanks to 2K, we are going in-depth this week with Bullets captain Nathan Sobey, who joins us now from Brisbane. Nathan, hello to you. How are you doing? Hey, how are we going? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Well, great to have you on the show. You guys have had mixed results recently with the Bullets. What would you put that down to? Um, just the consistency of what we're playing. Uh, we're not putting together four quarters of basketball, and uh, obviously the last game we didn't put together really any sort of Bullets basketball that we want to play, but um, yeah, it just comes down to that um, being inconsistent throughout games and patches. And when we are good, we're showing that we're capable of, um, of beating anyone. But when we're not ready to play on any given night, then it, it goes the other way for sure. Well, Sobs, congratulations on your year. You're in the um, talk for MVP. Incredible stuff. Uh, Joe reckons it's because you've become a dad. What's uh, What do you put it down to? Yeah, she might be uh, a bit correct there. I mean, it has definitely um, changed my lifestyle a lot. Um, got that better balance of, uh, of life with the family and stuff now. And, um, yeah, I would say that would be the main result to, to change in the attitude of the way I go about things is a bit different. Um, there's obviously someone that's number one now. I'm not putting myself first as much. Um, so, yeah, I would say that would be a huge, huge reason why. How tough has this year been for you? COVID's obviously had a massive impact. You're on the road for quite a while. Has that been difficult to handle? Yeah, I mean, it has been different, um, but all the teams have been going through it. Uh, I mean, some worse than others. Uh, but at the end of the day, when it's time to play basketball, there's not much changes. Uh, you, you've got to score more points and play better defence on the night, and, and that doesn't change. Obviously, it, you are away from families for extended uh, periods of time and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you got to get it done. What was your mindset when the Boomer squad came out and you weren't in it? You, you know, we were all shocked. I think the basketball community was shocked. What was your initial thoughts and how did you handle it? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it was a tough one. Um, getting that, uh, getting that sort of conversation, um, 
being told that you're not going to be part of it um, obviously hurts. But I, I think I was pretty good with how I put it in the memory bank real quick and, and just tried to let my game do the talking and have a have a good year and um, let, let the rest take care of itself. We certainly did that. What did it mean to you when you did get the call that you were added to the squad? Yeah, obviously getting that call um, meant a lot. And obviously it just shows the the process is very important. And, and no matter how you how how you get there in the end of the day, um, I got there. So, um, yeah, it definitely was a great um, feeling getting that phone call. And what about for you, you? You know, in the later stages of your career, still your best basketball to come, I would have thought. What sort of goals do you have now? Where, where's the priorities? I know winning a championship is always the team goal, but for you personally, you've still aspirations to get back to the NBA Summer League or the Boomers. What is it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously the ultimate goal is um, championship, like you said, and um, I'll always have the goal of trying to make the NBA. And um, that's just uh, back in the, like, I put that back. I don't try and focus on it as such. I worry about what, what's important in, the, uh, in front of me at the time and, um, right now, it's, I haven't played playoffs for this will be my third year straight um, if we weren't to make it. Um, so I, that that's our main goal right now, and I, I, I just really want to get back into that postseason um, postseason games and play playoffs again. Well, speaking of playoffs, obviously the NBA playoffs have just started. We've all been watching it. I know. Do you do you have a team? Do you have a, a favorite player that you follow? Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge LeBron fan and uh, obviously going for the Lakers, um, but I do like to um, watch uh, Dame Lillard and Portland go about it. I just love the way they go about it. And also, uh, I love watching watching Westbrook go about it as well. Who's winning the playoffs, mate? Oh, it's a tough one. I mean, I want to say the Lakers will get there, but uh, they didn't start um, too well uh, today. But, um, yeah, it'll be tough. The Clippers look pretty strong. Um, it'll be hard. Do you have much to do with the Aussies over there? Do you speak to the likes of a, of a Joe and Patty very often? Uh, I don't. I, I have in the past spoke to Joe a fair bit, um, but I haven't spoke to him um, for a while now. Uh, he was a huge um, help for me in the lead up to the World Cup, obviously having um, our firstborn and whatnot and how, to, how he was helping out with all that sort of stuff. So I was in contact with him a lot back and forth then, but I um, haven't spoke to him for a little while now. One more year left on contract with the Brisbane Bullets. It's um, as you said, haven't made the playoffs. What's the thoughts going forward? Andre's gone. It's probably a little bit of a surprise, but how do you handle uh, the future? Yeah, I mean, uh, I won't try and worry about it too much. Obviously, like you said, I've got one year left, um, and yeah, it is going to be uh, a completely different situation without Dre. Obviously, he's majority of the reason why I moved up here in the beginning and um, some of the guys as well on the team and a lot of them have actually moved on as well so it is a complete flip from when we first moved up here but um, the focus is to try and push for a playoff hunt this year and then if not come back strong and ready to go next year to, to try and get there next year. Beautiful. Nathan, hey, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, great to chat. We wish you the best of luck with the rest of this season with the Bullets. All the luck in the world for the Boomer squad and potentially an Olympic call-up as well. But great to chat, as always. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, it's time for a bit of debate. Let's bring in former NBL MVP Derek Rucker for points made. D-Ruck, hello to you. I want to ask you about the NBA first. It feels like maybe there's a bit of a changing of the guard going on. Ja Morant getting past Steph Curry and the Warriors. Trey Young dropping that dagger against the Knicks. What do you reckon? Mm. Yeah, well, it certainly looks like that. I know you guys are taking delight in watching my boy Steph Curry go down the other day to Ja Morant. But look, I've always loved Ja Morant. He plays the game exactly the way we love to see it played, Shane. He's aggressive. He's athletic. And most importantly, he has no fear. Now, today you saw another guy that has no fear. The Garden was not very friendly to Trey Young all game, but he got he got the ultimate dagger with that floater to end the game, Shane. And we can't say some of the words that were getting tossed around there in the garden, but it wasn't very pleasant, but he got the final laugh. I think the Knicks are still going to come back, but Trey Young is a straight hooper. Well, I can't believe you would even suggest that we were happy that Steph got bundled out of the playoffs. I think everybody wanted Steph to be able to stay in and see him get on fire. Clay Thompson coming back next year. For me, they've got to get rid of Wiggins. They've got to get something for him for them to be able to get better. 
um, because that is a few. disappointing season for them to be able to get bundled out at this stage. And I haven't sat around and been able to have time, mate, like yourself, because some of us have got to work, so I haven't seen all the games. <laughs> haven't even seen the highlights of Trey Young today. Um, both of you didn't answer yeah. my question. Has there been a changing of the guard, or do you think the old guys still rule? Joe, we're a bit older than you, so we don't just take delight in every new fancy. No, there's not been a changing of the guard yet. The men Thank in the you. league are still the same guys. Harden, Durant, Kyrie, LeBron, Curry. Those are the guys. Hammer, what do you reckon? No, I agree with that. But, you know, some of these new stars that are coming up, they're just getting older. So as they get older, they get more confident. Uh, their that's teams true. get better. They grow with them. So now they start to win playoff games. And that's what it's all about. I love the fact that the draft works because these young guys go to the teams that need to help. And over a period of time, we see them blossom. It's happening. Right. Let's talk NBA awards now. Shane, we know the short list for each of the awards. But if you had one lock that you could go for, what would it be? Well, I'm going with uh, Clarkson, I think. Best six man, he's just a guarantee to be able to get it done. Joe Ingles is the other one in the conversation, and Joey's started so many more games than what he's come off the bench, so I think that rules him out. Clarkson's probably averaged another five or six points a game. He's been a huge impact player, so I reckon he's my lock. d -Ruck. I think without a doubt the lock is LaMelo Ball. He was sensational in his first season. He is going to be the rookie of the year. It's unfortunate that they were stricken with injuries, first to LaMelo, then to Gordon Hayward. Otherwise, I thought Charlotte could have gone much further in the playoffs this year. But LaMelo Ball, for me, is the MVP. But I really like the Timberwolves rookie, Anthony Edwards. He's a prolific scorer, and I think he has a big future ahead also. You sound like homicide. Did you just say he's the MVP? <laughs> You, no, no, no. <laughs> homicide, of the homicide. Year. Of the other year. <laughs> I disagree. Him the MVP. I disagree with both of you and oh. Edwards for rookie of the year. Derek Rose oh. Hammer for six man. Come on, Derek Rose, cut it out. My yeah. my lock though, Julius Randall for most improved. He's been outstanding. Yeah. Uh, the NBA playoffs obviously have started. There've been a couple of upsets so far. D Rock, has anybody been especially disappointing for you so far? You know, in the bubble last year in the NBA playoffs, I thought Anthony Davis got off to a bit of a sluggish performance. And, and then he hit that big shot, Shane, against Denver, and it kind of sparked him. He needs to hit a big shot now because he is struggling. He's looked so out of whack. His timing is off. It doesn't look like he's motivated. And right now, the Lakers need him. LeBron is older. He's not going to be able to produce those results that you want game in, game out. Anthony Davis right now, I know we're early into it, but he's been disappointing for me. Yeah, I agree that he's been disappointing. Game one, five for 16. But the thing Ouch. for me that emphasizes his effort levels is he had seven rebounds. How do you have seven rebounds when you've got that sort of athletic ability and you're seven foot tall? You've got to be able to go and impact the game in other areas than just relying on being able to score. But one of the biggest disappointments, uh, disappointments for me across the board is Fournier at, at Boston. He has been a bust on that trade. They needed more for him to be able to impact Boston to have any sort of chance in the playoffs. Hey, you better stop calling people a bus. Fournier might go Kwame Brown on you. You better ease up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring it home, guys. We've got Melbourne United, Perth. The Phoenix are essentially a lock-in for third. Who gets that fourth spot, Hammer? Well, I'm going to go for the Sydney Kings. I just can't rely on the Illawarra Hawks. I think it's going to come down mm. to that last game of the season. Uh, they're pretty even, and you know that emphasised on the latter as well. But I just think that the Kings have got the ability to put more points on the board on any particular night. It's going to be a flip of the coin. I think it's great that it comes down to this particular game, a rivalry game between two arch rivals over a long period of time. But for me, it's the Kings. Well, Shane, I know you've been emotionally vulnerable and a bit out of whack since your baby girl, Shiloh, went over to Chicago. <laughs> and if you've been following the, in, the WNBA, you'll know that June 3rd is when the Chicago Sky play at the Phoenix Mercury, another big game. But check this out, June 3rd down at the Sandpit, the WEC, the Sydney Kings will go down and they will lose to the Illawarra Hawks. Ooh. Even though I don't trust Illawarra, I don't trust them because every time they start playing well, they lose a big game. Brian Gorgian is a master coach, but he hasn't quite been able to get what he, I'm sure, has wanted out of this team this year. 
But Illawarra are going to get that four spot. Shane, book it. And my boy Julian. How, how did Illawarra win that cases. game? What? How did Illawarra win that game? How will they do it? Going, hey, they've already proven your little theory about 73 points incorrect. They started to score some more points. Against I think Cairns. Brian Gordon has found something with <laughs> Emmett Nah and Isaac White. What? Against Cairns and against Adelaide with without their two superstars. Come on. I want to see and, them play hey, against the real team before we start do thinking can, that. Cairns and Adelaide's players get paid to play? Oh, They're pros. We could still get 20 against those two teams. <laughs> You could, maybe not me. Derek, before we let you go very quickly, have you still got Perth to win the championship? Of course he does. No, I'm a man of my word. You don't know about me? Oh, no, I'm what just I checking. say, I believe in. Okay, and Shane, Melbourne? Melbourne. Melbourne's just got too much much depth, and they'll have the home court advantage. I think they get it done. They got the belief, they got the quality, and it's going to happen. Well, thankfully, Joe, the finals Joe, aren't too think's far away. Win it, Joe? Who do you like, Joe? I like Melbourne. I don't think that anyone could get them over a course of a series. Okay. Okay. Uh, as I said, finals not too far away. Derek, thanks so much for joining us again this week. Thanks, guys. Yeah, always great to chat to D-Rap Hammer. That's pretty much all we've got time for. Yep. I love hearing what your play of the week is every week. Uh, everyone knows what it is. <laughs> what is it this week? It's Finky Joyce. He's the what most he giving player in the, he just continues to oh, give the, around the Australia burgers. he's free throw <laughs> we we we've got it can we show it the, the free throw where he shot it in Perth and God bless him I put it on Twitter but he actually wiped his hands like it slipped. Oh it's cute no one believed it come on Finky no one believed it you're gonna help man. him with his stroke. Oh I'm, I'm right here. 30 minutes I reckon it take help him. It's all can you help head. me with mine at the same time yep. please? Yep. I think I need it. Straight afterwards. All right yeah. we've is he number one? <laughs> No. How is that not number one? <laughs> All right. Thank you for tuning in this week. Thank you to TCL. Don't forget these bad boys. Thank you to 2K and News Corp as well. We'll see you guys next week. Luke Travers is number five this week. The Perth DP showing a bit of finesse in another solid outing for the Cats. Travers never loses confidence. That is a delightful little finger roll, Andrew Gay. Next up, it's Matt Hodgson. He had his eye on this one from the moment it left Anthony Dramic's hands. Can't get that to go, but Hodgson can. Matt Hodgson down the lane, no one blocking out. The big fella, the strong put back. Finish sat up there perfectly for him. Geordie Hunter is having a season. At number three, it's the MIP candidate showing his strength at the rim. Jordan Hunter, my goodness, <laughs> caught the body of Colton Iverson. Let the bodies hit the floor. Jordan Hunter going up, up and taking it down. Sam Froling had a game high 19 points in their win over the 36ers, including this Tomahawk to end the half. Great extra pass and finish. That rim has taken a beating. That is how you finish off a half. And this is how you finish from deep. Chris Golding's heels didn't hit the ground on this release. It's Golding in the corner. Oh my God. Oh my God. You can't be doing that. <laughs> that is world. just incredible world-class shot making on display. This is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.